Okay, so this was the game played today between Geary and Magnus at Tata Steel. It was a Queen's Indian, which is a rare um, customer today um, for two reasons. One is black doesn't play it, and two is white doesn't play it. So uh, I would say like in the 80s and 90s, uh, knight f3 was the most common move. And probably the last 20 years, knight c3 is more common. And obviously you play g3 if you want to play a Catalan and avoid the Queen's Indian. Now, most people don't want to avoid the Queen's Indian because <clears throat> they literally don't care. However, if you play the Catalan, like let's say Matt Larson, then there's no reason to learn Catalan theory and Queen's Indian theory. You could just learn Catalan theory. So you'd play G3 here, <clears throat> which is what Matt Larson does. Um, preparing G4, I assume. Okay, so Knight F3. And in this position, <clears throat> um, nowadays, everybody's playing D5. Um, probably in super GM praxis, that's 90% of games. Probably the Bogo Indian and the Queens Indian <clears throat> are about equally as common right now. Whereas between 1975 and 2000, B B6 was the most common move. There's Queens Indians everywhere. And you can look <clears throat> at games with Jan Timon and Yasser Sarawan and Anatoly Karpov, um, Kasparov being white. And there's a lot of Queens Indians. Every game's a Queens Indian. In the last 10 years, no games are Queens Indians. Um, it's not clear why, but I think um, D5, you know, people have analyzed those kinds of Queens Gambits and Ragozins and Viennas like pretty deep. And B6, it's hard to analyze deep. You're just like slightly worse and you're solid. And people decided, since I have an engine and I have coaches and I'm 2750, I'll just play D5 and, and I'll play a theoretical game all the way to the end and draw. Instead of B6 and it's move 12 and I'm slightly worse and we're on our own. So that's, that's what happens to chess theory the last 20 years or so. Okay, but Magnus played B6, so it's a good surprise weapon, I guess because Geary's not expecting Magnus to play the Queen's Indian. And white has many ways to play. Um, Kasparov liked to play a3. Knight c3 is a move. g3 is the main move. And he played g3. And before 1980, bishop b7 was the main move. And after 1980, I would say bishop a6 is the main move. And since this game was played after 1980, it was played today, um, he played bishop a6. So they played one of the main lines. Um, b3 is the most common move. And possibly in the last 10 years, that's been usurped by queen c2 because I don't know any theory in the queen's Indian. In the 1980s and 90s, <clears throat> I could have either color in the queen's Indian. It was possible. Now I can't have either color because I don't play knight f3 on move three and I don't play the queen's Indian anymore. So <clears throat> whatever happened the last 15 years, I didn't keep up with it because I don't play either side of it anymore. And b b3, bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop e7 was the main line for a long time. And some of the theoretical lines went to move 25 or so. Queen c2 is, is less common, but still, you know, it's fine. Okay, so bishop goes back to b7. And you might ask, why did black lose a tempo? White got a free developing move with queen c2. If white's queen was on d1, black could have played bishop b7 in one move, which is also a line. Thanks that Chai Town dude for subscribing. And the reason is black is going to argue the queen's worse on C2 than D1 
due to the weakness of the D pawn. And black is going to play C5. And it's going to be hard for white to play D5 because white has three things on, uh, black has three things on D5 and white has one. And after C5, we can you know, threaten to take this pawn and this is pinned and, and so forth. So the idea is to play a quick C5 and punish white for not being able to play D5. That's the idea. Okay, so we continue, bishop d2, c5. And the only way to get an advantage is to play d5 and temporarily and or permanently sacrifice a pawn. And black has to take this pawn because if it's white's move and white plays e4, black's position is terrible. So he takes the pawn. And in this position, white has more than one move, but he just took back, which is the main move. And then again, if we play e4, we just have a great position. So knight takes d5. And black is up a pawn, but it's sort of a backward pawn on a half open file. <clears throat> white can castle immediately and start developing with threats. And black is sort of in sort of no man's land. Black's position is sort of weird. Okay, so castles, that's a pure pawn sacrifice. Bishop e7. Rook to d1, and in this position, you know, now it could get serious. You know, your knight could get pinned and so forth. Thanks, SC Cowell, for the subscription. And even though I don't know anything about the Queen's Indian anymore, I do know this line. I know that the move that Black played is theory, knight c6. And the idea is if he takes it, then we get a full rook for our piece. So we win an exchange, plus we're up a pawn. So it's gonna be really good for black. So knight c6, and black, white plays queen f5. Now we're threatening the knight for real. So knight f6, and then e4. And if it was white's turn to move, white would play e5. But then black's, I don't know, Black wants to take a move back because e5 is really strong. Now you have to realize this is all preparation. This is all theory. And the difference in Magnus's head, I would guess, is he prepared this line specifically for this game, which he doesn't play with Black. And this is just Geary's general preparation for when he faces the Queen's Indian. And he probably didn't look at this at all in the last week or two preparing for Magnus for this event. Thanks, quadruple digit at least, at last. Also at least. And um, so you can see by the clock times, if you can see it here where my mouse is circling, Magnus has more time than he started with because this is his pregame preparation. And Anisha's used 20 minutes because he's trying to remember his preparation. Okay, so D6. E5. And now black only has one move that doesn't lose immediately. Okay, because there's pins everywhere. Everything's pinned. Okay, and he has to play queen d7. Again, this is all preparation. It's all theory. The players both know this line. Queen takes check. You have to take with the knight because your knight's hanging. White wins back his pawn. Black plays bishop f6. Now, when Svidler was doing commentary with Howell, obviously Howell wasn't saying much because Svidler, you know, doesn't let his co-commentator say very much, no matter who it is. And he said, if I was black here and I could castle queenside, I would definitely take black. So even if I castle kingside, I sort of like black. Because this sort of reminded him of a Grunfeld, where white gets the pass D pawn and black has the active play here. And he said, therefore, if white wants to get an advantage, he has to play rookie one check and stop black from castling and connecting his rooks. Which is, makes sense. Okay, king F8. Knight C3. 
Um, in this position, black has several moves. Black can take the knight. Black can play rook e8. Now, Magnus played a move that he faced um, when he was white many years ago. So Magnus has now had white and black in this position. With white, he won. And after knight b4, and this game was played against, a, you know, it was either Fresenet or Le Pelletier, but I always confuse them. I think it was Fresenet. Thomas to turtle 72. The Magnus game in question went bishop g5, knight c2, rook e7. And um, black, black ended up losing the game. It was incredibly complicated. And when the smoke cleared, it was not complicated. It was like a boring end game that Magnus squeezed him. And my engine right now, Stockfish 15 at depth 29 says it's equal. Okay. And I'm sure Magnus, when he prepared this line for Geary, he was ready for the move that he had played against the, you know, the GM he had played. Um, okay. And instead, Geary played a move which possibly Magnus was not familiar with. And also, I can't bet that Geary was familiar with this because I don't know. But by the clock's times used, I would guess... Geary was on his own here. And the reason Geary would be on his own is he didn't specifically prepare for the Queen's Indian um, for this game. This is just his preparation in case somebody plays the Queen's Indian with Bishop A6, Bishop B7. And he has to remember whenever he analyzed this, which was a long time ago. And I remember between moves like 5 and 10, at some point, Geary put his head down on his turn trying to remember, like, his prep from, you know, years ago or months ago. Who knows? And he played knight e5, which I don't think Magnus was familiar with. Um, and I think the players were both on their own now. Now, knight e5 has two threats. Knight takes d7 check and bishop takes b7. So... Uh, Black has two moves according to the engine. Knight takes knight, which was played, and rook d8, which is a weird move. Basically letting him take your bishop before you take the knight. And likely they will transpose. After rook d8, I could take and you take, and it's sort of what happened in the game, but by transposition. So he takes, takes, and rook d8. And Black has all sorts of threats. Rook takes pawn. This knight coming to d3 looks good. This knight coming to d3 looks good. And this knight coming to c2 looks winning. So white stopped all the threats. Geary did and played rook d1. That stops the knight from forking the rooks. And it defends the advanced past d pawn. Now, the problem with black's position is in the best case scenario, he can win this pawn if things go his way. And then maybe he's equal because white has two bishops and black's king is blocking his rook. So it's hard to like discombobulate this. And I have two bishops anyway. And my knight has you know, all these good squares. So the fact is black is, is, uh, is just worse here. And I, I wouldn't play this opening with black based on this game. Okay, Magnus played knight c4, which the engine recommends. And Geary doesn't want to lose his pawn, so he played d7. Makes sense. And in this position, Magnus came up with the wrong idea. Um, it looks really good, but there's a very nice method that Geary has for getting a big advantage. And the reason Magnus played this way is he overlooked um, 
White's 24th move, and this is the 21st move. If he had seen White's 24 move and didn't underestimate it, which he did, he wouldn't have played this way. And the engine on only depth 19 for some reason, it's on depth 29 before. Come on, man. Stop tricking me. Unlimited. I, I blame Danny Wrench. Uh, recommends 95 attacking the pawn on d7. I'm sorry, recommends, 95 is a move. Recommends king e7 attacking the pawn on d7. Let's take with the rook. And then it wants white to play bishop c8. Then we can play knight c2 as in the game. But he played knight c2 here. And then he made a very bad move, which I think if two supercomputers were playing, White would win. I think White's winning after the next move. And here, Black has to play knight e5 and, and try to win this pawn. And instead he played knight d4, which also tries to win this pawn, and the knight's fantastic. So without calculation, knight d4 seems great. The knight's on a great square. It blocks the rook's defense from the d-pawn. The d-pawn is attacked. Black's looking good with his knights, etc. And White has a very nice refutation of this move. And Geary played it. It's very hard to understand and see. And that move is B4. And what we want to do is we want to trade on C5 and use the open B line for our rook. And in this position... Um, if Magnus isn't losing here, which I say he is, I think knight d4 loses to b4. He's definitely losing after his next move. He played rook takes d7, and either he missed or he underestimated bishop d5. And that is just crushing. The knight on c4 is attacked, and uh, if the knight moves away... Uh, I'm going to take on c5. My rook has the open line. My bishop goes to a3. And you're, you're getting crushed. Your, your rook is trapped. Your king is open. I have the b file. I have the two bishops. And after bishop d5, Magnus realized, you could tell at the board, that he had either underestimated the strength of this move or he just missed it. I don't know. And the engine now says that white is plus five. Like that the game's over, basically. And while the game was going on live, the gawking rabble who were watching the game that with Svidler and Howell doing the game analysis, they were suggesting alternate ways for Geary to win that the engine would do, that humans probably wouldn't do. Okay, so knight d6, saving the knight. Takes, takes, and then bishop a3. Yeah, this is, that, that's bad. That's bad and you should feel bad. Um, Magnus played the best move according to the engine. King e7. Um, bishop takes c5. White's... I mean, you can see that white's winning. Black's king is terrible. Black's knights are pinned and hanging. White's knight has knight b5 and knight e4. We have rookie one check. We're threatening the knight on d4 at the moment. Magnus again played the best move, knight e6. And in this position, uh, Geary played the way that Svidler thought he would play, very human. And the engine says, no, do this and do that and do this and do that. And here's the funniest variation. This is the funniest one. Knight a4. Knight takes. Knight takes. Rook uh, c7. Rook check. King d8. Knight a6. Rook c8. Now, if you see this position which possibly both players did. 
you might be like, well, I don't know what to do now. Black's going to play rook e8, opposite color bishops, equal material. How do I win? And then the engine plays bishop takes f7. <laughs> Frankly, ridiculous. And the idea is if you go here, you get checkmated. <laughs> Which is funny if you have white. If you're black, it's less funny. And then this is completely winning according to the engine. Okay. It, Geary played a more human way. Uh, he played bishop b4. And uncharacteristically for Magnus, he fell apart. He defended not good. <laughs> Which is weird for him. Now... I understand why he didn't play well here. The way to play well goes against everything you're taught as a chess player, which Magnus knows more than anybody. And Magnus thought, I'm not doing that, the right move. And so he played a, a terrible move. And according to the engine, Bishop B4 gives a lot of White's advantage away. White's only plus 2.15, which still has to be winning. If black plays bishop takes c3, and you would think two bishops against two knights and black has an unsafe king, it's just losing. Knight f5, defending the g-pawn again because it's not defended sufficiently. And this is just awful for black, but the game goes on and Geary has to win this game. And if two engines are playing, White's going to win. But the way Magnus played, like lost in like three moves. And this game would go another 20 moves. Because you have to like win in a very long-winded, complicated, you know, slowly. There's, there's no, there's no like immediate win. There's no like check, check, take, take. There's none of that. The engine just, you know, plays positionally and the two bishops crush the two knights, but it's going to take forever. Magnus was obviously distraught in this position because he knew he was losing. He knows he's been losing for a while and he can't make himself give up the, the, the two bishops for the two knights. He just can't do it in this open position. He's like, that's ridiculous. I have to do something else. And unfortunately, there's something else that was that was no good. God damn. Now you have to be careful when you're black, because if it's white's move, knight b5 wins and knight e4 wins. They both win immediately because of this pin. So that, that's why you take the knight. And Magnus played a5 because you have to take on a5. You can't maintain the pin because your, your knight's attacked. And so now... What whites up a pawn and everything's the same. He's just, a, he has a past a pawn and the bishop controls the queening square. So we have all the same advantages except we have this extra past pawn now. And I think Magnus overlooked after rook c8 attacking the knight again that Geary has this excellent move. However, as Fiddler pointed out, if white plays a boring move like knight e2, he's just winning. The engine likes what Geary did. It wants to play what Geary did. But the engine's boring move is rook d3 defending the knight. And it just says like plus five. But Geary played very accurately and quickly knight a4. Now, obviously, from Magnus's perspective, the refutation of knight a4, which threatens knight b6, god damn is to play rook a7. So Carlson might have thought, well, he won't play knight a4 because I'll play, I'll play rook a7. But unfortunately, white has more than one way to win. The best way is bishop to b4. The rook has to take to make rook a7 make any sense, obviously. Then we take on d6. And this is probably what Magnus missed. I'm guessing this is what Magnus missed when he played a4. After bishop b3 check, we play rook d4, 
and everything's fine. Black's winning. Black's up a piece. And you would think, you would think, after bishop b7 check, black just plays king here, and after takes, takes, black is fine. This is equal according to the engine. And probably Magnus overlooked, after bishop b7, king c7, that you just play rook c1 check and win the whole rook. Not easy to see five moves away. So when Magnus played a4, I'm guessing he saw this and didn't see bishop b7, rook c1. That's what I'm guessing. Because the guys see a lot, both players. So to play a move as bad as a4, there has to be some, or a5 I mean, there has to be some tactical justification and he must have thought knight a4 was no good. Fiddler's point was white can make any move and be completely winning, so a5 is terrible which I sort of agree with. Like knight e2 probably wins, rook d3 wins. And it's same kind of position Magnus had, but we're just going to win with our past a pawn. Okay, so, so Magnus played knight c4, which is terrible. And then rook c1. And I mean, this is attacked and this fork is happening and bishop check is keeping your king in the center. And I have the two bishops and so forth. Bishop e5, that's also a mistake. Magnus, after bishop b4 check, wants to play king f6. He doesn't want his king trapped on the back rank getting mated. Okay, and the problem is, if you play king f6, which he did not do, you play knight c5, Oh, I apologize. He did play king f6. Yeah, Magnus didn't play well this game. Uh, he has to go. I mean, he, he can resign here. This he can resign. Okay, knight c5, which is an excellent move. It attacks the rook. And it attacks the knight a lot. The knight is defended zero times. Now, some of you might be confused because this knight is attacked twice and it's defended once. But there's this pin on the here. So the rook is overworked we can't successfully win a piece. But after this, we're threatening to win the piece two different ways, and we're threatening to win all of black's pieces. So he played knight takes c5, rook takes c4, and there's the knight's pinned and it's attacked twice and so forth. And if you play like rook here attacking my bishop, then rook takes would, would defend. Now, here's a funny variation, which I just saw. With the idea of taking this and taking this, I play rook c6. And also bishop c3 check. So many ways to win. So Magnus played rook dc7 to avoid losing a piece. And Geary played the best move. Every move wins, but bishop a5 wins immediately. Because once I play bishop b6, you, you, your rook can't go back to c7. So that's that's bad. <laughs> so if you go, it doesn't matter where you go, I'll go here. And then, yeah. If bishop here, then bishop g2, and so forth. Black's getting ripped apart six ways from Sunday. So after bishop a5, Magnus resigned. A very clean game from Geary. Uh, the engine doesn't like a couple of Geary's moves. However, the engine doesn't like about five or six of Magnus's moves, which is weird for him. Usually he's defending accurately. And he got a worse position, then he got a lost position, and normally when Magnus is losing, it takes 20, 30 moves to beat him if you play really, really well. If you win. And here it didn't. Mag Magnus just folded up. So not only did he play badly, he didn't um, play well when he was losing. And normally Magnus doesn't lose hope. Like, well, I'm going to lose. I'll make five or six more moves and resign. I mean, you know, Magnus finds the only way to draw or the only way to be worse or something, which he could have done. And the best chance... Uh, 
was was this position after bishop b4 if he had played bishop takes bishop takes knight takes there's probably some reasonable percentage chance that the game would have ended in a draw maybe 20 percent maybe 80 percent geary wins 20 percent draw maybe 75 25 maybe 50 50 it's there's something somewhere in there and the way magnus played was without hope a5 is just lose white has many ways to win after that so um not not a be, not his best day at the office but considering magnus prepared this specifically for this game and geary was trying to remember the theory that he you know analyzed who knows when geary did really well to navigate the opening and middle game put pressure to under to magnus and he couldn't he couldn't survive the pressure tough tournament now it's funny about this in slow chess geary has beaten magnus once before this game and it was on this day this is the anniversary of that game and uh geary was 16 so i think geary's 28 so that was 12 years ago today but i could be wrong about him being 28 and 12 years ago but i'm close you can't get closer than that. I'm, I'm within a year. So he only beats him on January 17th. That's the only day date Geary has beaten Magnus in slow chess. The chances of that are very good, except for one thing. Well, actually, the chances are reasonable because they're both playing in Tata Steel every year. So that's, that's where he can beat him. Yeah. He's 30. So it was 14 years ago. Exactly. Yay, we're on Chess TV. Hi, Chess TV. I'm analyzing various games from Tata Steel from today and yesterday. But yeah, that was a very good game uh, by Geary. And Magnus played below his usual level. Truth hurts. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes your opponent plays well and you don't. Then when you have black, then you lose. Truth hurts. Yeah, just as hard. You have to realize everybody loses all the time. And you don't need to find excuses like, oh, Magnus was tired and Magnus, you know, thought Geary would play for a draw. And Magnus must have been sick today. Magnus played worse than his opponent and his opponent beat him. That's, that's what happened. Usually that doesn't happen. Usually Magnus plays better than his opponent that Magnus wins. But that, that didn't happen. So very nice win from Geary. Okay, let's look at another.